to you greetings to you listen i'm gonna be on here tonight if you have a notepad make sure you write this stuff down and all the broadcasts that we doing make sure that you have the broadcasts and you watch them and you listen to them because there's so much wisdom inside of them especially the last one that i just did today now <clears throat> i'm dealing with the wealth economy of God. Look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 34. And Jesus saith unto them, how many loaves have you? How many loaves have you? So I want you to understand that when the Lord is providing for you, he wants to know what you already have. Saints, what I'm teaching you is wisdom for life. Look, Jesus already know what he about to do, but he asks in them, what, how many loaves have you? Meaning, what do you already have? I know I'm about to bring something to your life that you don't have. I know I'm about to increase you, give you more than enough. Somebody share me on Facebook. Give, I'm about to give you more than what you need, more than what you desire. But what do you already have? I need have five people share me on Facebook right now. Share me on Facebook. Share me on Facebook. Now, here's what the Lord is doing here. He's letting Now, saints, look, look at the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's called the working of miracles. So who's working the miracles? We know it's the Holy Spirit. But it says the working. So in the working is not just the Spirit of God. It's you. You're involved in the working. Understand that the working is a category of activity in the supernatural. It's the working of miracles. Now, the Bible also talked to us about the working of devils. So if there's the working of devils, there's the working of miracles. There's also the working of the believer. There's the working of angels ministering spirit sent forth when we find that in Hebrews chapter one, the working of angels. Now in Psalm 34 verse seven, it said that he command his angels concerning them to guide them. Uh, uh, the angel Lord encamps around them who fears him and delivers them. Now we dealing with the working of angels. Psalm 91, uh, he will command his angels concerning you. That's the working of angels. Now, now let, let me just, let me, let me say this. You probably never thought about this, 
But when we talk about Psalm 91, even sowers can unlock Psalm 91 in a financial beneficial arena. You know how? Because if you sow in, when he command his angels, he going to command the financial angels. He going to command the prosperity angels, which Abraham moved with this prosperity angel. Isaac moved with this prosperity angel. Um, Solomon moved with this prosperity angels. Uh, Isaac, Jacob, uh, Esther, Ruth. See, it was prosperity angels moving through Naomi to tell Ruth, do this and this when you're around Boaz. See, saints, let me just tell you something. There is a divine behavior that unlocks favor. There are things that Jesus will have you do as a woman, as a man, that increases, intensifies, or even invites the favor of God on your life. Because Naomi was given Ruth wisdom. Jesus was given Mary wisdom. That's why she sat at his feet. Her attentiveness was unlocking favor. The woman with the issue of blood, her pursuit of Jesus unlocked favor. The Seraphonician woman, her, her unwillingness to be offended. Saints, write that down. Unwillingness to be un offended increases favor. If you just, listen, that one statement can save you so much demotion. It can save you so much, uh, save you so much mental combats and mental warfare. The unwillingness to be offended. The unwillingness to be offended. Meaning that you refuse to let anything that God decides to bother you. You know that he knows what he's doing. You trust him. You're in covenant with him. And therefore, that will increase favor on your life. Luke chapter 2 verse 52 showed us that favor has levels. It has dimensions. It has seasons. It has reasons. It has multiplying, multiplying abilities. So favor can take you from one grade to the next grade to the next grade. Now, here, here's what you need to understand, sons and daughters. When you have favor, your finances got to submit to the favor that's on you. My job is just to do what the Holy Ghost want me to do. And God's job is to favor me and cause my life to submit to the favor that, that he placed on me. And when the anointing of favor is on you, finances, money, and wealth are all connected to the favor on your life. That's why favor is better than even life. Because favor releases life. And watch this. Favor releases all of the life of God. His healing life. His deliverance life. His blessing life. His wisdom life. His liberty life, his wisdom life, because saints, I've been moving into wisdom anointing for a long period of my life. And wisdom makes your, your soul experience the oxygen of God. Your soul experience the oxygen of God with wisdom. Wisdom releases God's CPR into your soulless realm. So, so wisdom is divine CPR for your decisions. It is the oxygen for your actions to add life to every decision you make. Choose this day who you serve, life or death, uh, blessings or cursings. So, so wisdom is the oxygen tank of God. I heard the Holy Spirit say it like that. Write that down. Wisdom is the oxygen tank of God. So when you're in the wisdom of the Lord, you are receiving another breath that's different than the breath that everybody is receiving. You're receiving spiritual life. You're receiving financial direction, relationship direction. 
emotional direction. Because the powerful thing about the wisdom anointing, the wisdom anointing will tell you what decision that you'll make that will affect your soul. If you go talk with this person today, do you know that you're going to enter into sadness? Oh, no, I ain't know that. I just thought that I was just about to drink some Starbucks with them. No, nigga, you about to get knocked down. They about to laugh at your vision. <laughs> they about to laugh at your vision. You about to tell them what God told you. They are about to laugh at you. Now, praise God, if they're going to laugh at you and you just going to let them laugh at you, then you ain't going to laugh no more. Huh? Because when you start hearing them laugh at you, then you're going to start guessing about what God said to you. And what are you going to do when God, when God starts speaking to you, when God starts speaking to you and starts telling you what you need to do, what are you going to do? What, what are you, what, what, what are you going to do when, when God starts telling you that you, this, this is what he calling you to do and they're laughing at you and you're letting them laugh at you. What? What are you going to do? Since I don't listen to black preachers. I listen to white preachers now. I done turn into a racist. I ain't. <laughs> I mean, listen, white people, they shoot. White people, they talk about money. Ain't nobody fight them. Remember? Black people talk about money. Oh, this is a false prophet. White people be like, you need to give. I'm tired of these. I'm tired of all these tithes and offerings letters being empty. I looked at the tithes and offerings. You ain't coming in. You need to give more. We got text by giving. We got, we got, we got call by giving. We got people all around us answer the call. You need to, you need to call. You get social security. You need to call. Black person do it. They don't got into persecution. They don't call everybody and their mama. They don't call the federal government. The federal government, like, listen, we in a shutdown. What you want us to do? All right, we, I understand your complaint, but we is in a shutdown. Saying, saying, hey, 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 last people up there, they up there. They up there again, all worried. They thought that this world system was going to be all right. No, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus letting stuff happen. I know, you remember the word of the Lord. He said, eight years of righteousness. So eight years of righteousness mean that things are going to go the way that he wants it to go. Even though it looked like, hey, what's happening? That's how he wanted to go. Saints, do you know that now they're making the teaching of homosexuality a doctrine and a subject in schools that have to be taught? They're starting to pit the doctrine of being a homosexual being a transgender, they're pitting it more and more. <laughs> Prophet Stephanie said, uh, 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 Zendaya, when, when, when Zendaya, what we're going to do with Zendaya school? I said, Zendaya, this, <laughs> that is five years. <laughs> I said, listen, that is five years. That, one, two, three, four, five, five, five. That is five years. I said, listen, the, the person going, they going. <laughs> they teaching about being a homosexual now. And the schools are receiving the translation that this must be taught in certain states. Do you know, you know, you know how, how dangerous this nation is in trouble with God? Saints, it's just because we here. It's just because we are here that a lot of things are sliding. That, that's why Jesus haven't destroyed America. Because Prophet Joshua Holmes is here. You here, daughter. You here, son. You here, woman of God. You here, man of God. Is because the righteous, remember what Abraham said, if there be 50 righteous in the land, would you spare it? God said, yes, I will spare it for their sake. But Sodom and Gomorrah had no righteous people, only Lot and his wife. Now, saints, what I want you to see with Lot and his wife, they went from being righteous. Lot's wife went from being righteous 
to being rebellious in a couple moments. Don't miss God. She died after God has sent help for her. Brought her out of that disaster. In one moment, she switched from righteousness to rebellion. Be very careful and be on your P's and Q's 24-7, seven days a week. Listen, y'all, a two to learn. That's, a, that's the French I got for you. I'm going to have to get you up out of here, player pimping and pimping player. There's another one. Y'all y'all up there, y'all just this. Y'all up there, the, 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 the throwing up gang signs in London, in London speakage. I ain't playing with you. We're going to get you up out of here, players, you London spirits. Now, that's what the direction that school is going. It is amazing. We don't have one place in school where they talk to us about Christianity and Jesus. Not one place. It's all good, though. That's the world system. Okay, so watch what Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 15, verse 34. And Jesus said unto them, how many loaves have ye? And they said, seven and a few little fish. What is Jesus asking them this? He's letting them know, hey, you got some seed in your hand that you can sow. Children of God, you are not broke. There is always a seed in your presence. My God. Saints, look what he did right here in the text. He acts, watch, Jesus already know. He already know that he about to release a, a financial increase a money miracle, a money moving occurrence. I beat the brakes off that cold I had. I just want to say that. <laughs> I just want to say that one time. Beat the brakes off. Hold on, I need to share somebody on Facebook. Let me see who's sharing my broadcast. Let me see. Let me see who's sharing my broadcast. Oh, she about. Oh, she about. Who is it? She is. Saints, this is, <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you hang around older people, that's how they be doing. Let me, let me see. Did you call me? Let me see, man. Let me check my car records. I don't see you in here. Is that is that you? The 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 nine one one number? No, that is the emergency room. What the, what the, what the, where was you when you called me? They make you feel like you ain't called them. You's like, I no, I did call you. No, you didn't call me. I had my phone on. Let now. Let me check now. Let me check to see if I had my phone on because I probably put on silent. I went to the doctor's office. They said no phones allowed. All right. He told me that no phones is allowed. All right. Let me check. Don't rush me. All right. I didn't rush you. When you when you held up, I told you to bring me two pieces of chicken. You didn't bring it until it was cold. I had to microwave them. I had two pieces of chicken. You had to make me microwave all, all the, all the, you made me have to microwave all the two chickens. I told you to come back in five minutes. You didn't come back in five minutes. The chicken was cold. The mac and cheese was cold. The coleslaw was cold. All of that. The mic and you know my microwave ain't working. <laughs> no, I, I know. You know my microwave ain't working, but you still took your time. So let me take my time. Let me find your call. I don't see your call nowhere. Just here you go again with another lie. You asked me for $5 yesterday and you still ain't pay me back. <laughs> now, look at this here. Jesus is asking them for what they have in their presence because they have a miracle working substance in their presence. Now, saints, I want you to see this text from another point of view that you probably never heard before because this is fresh. 
The miracle did not come from Jesus exactly. The miracle was in the seven loaves and a few little fish. Watch this here. Verse 34 of chapter 15 in Matthew is where the miracle was. See, see, a lot of miracles that you ask Jesus for is already in your presence. I'm dealing with apostolic dominion this month, remember? I'm, I'm dealing with binding and loosening. I'm dealing with apostolic power. The creative governmental grace of Jesus Christ. Governmental wealth, governmental riches, governmental health. Because saints, Jesus wants you blessed all around. He wants you blessed in your mind. You ain't never supposed to struggle in your thoughts. Saints, I'm probably up more hours in a day than you. I, 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 I can guarantee that. In a week, I know that I'm up way more than you. Even some of y'all that got insomnia. <laughs> now, <laughs> let, me, let, let, me, let me just say this. Now, I ain't laughing at you. I ain't laughing at you. But I'm telling you, I know that I'm up more, more than you. All right? In all the hours that I'm up, I don't have one hour where I'm struggling. Saints, I've crossed over into the holy life of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit led life of Jesus Christ. I done crossed over into the glory of God. I know it's true. I know it's possible. I know that there is a realm where the Holy Spirit governs your mind and he inspires your thoughts and he gives you what to say and he gives you what to... Ah! And he gives you how to think and he gives you all type of empowerment so that nothing by any means shall cause you to slip up. And saints, not one moment do I struggle. Not one hour do I have a time where I'm saying, Lord, please help me get out of this. Not one time. Not even thinking about Saints, I don't even think about my enemies. Saints, you think that I'll be up in my prayer life binding? No, I ain't got no time to talk to that. What, what can I say? What can I say? That long neck Satan, huh? Giraffe neck Satan. You think I'm going to spend my prayer life after Jesus done shed his blood up there having a whole debate about buying you this and buying you that? No. He already defeated. As long as I'm enjoying Jesus, I'm not employing demons. I want to say this one more time. As long as I'm enjoying Jesus, I'm not employing demons. So demons are on the unemployment list. They don't have no work. Saints, why did the Bible say give no place to the devil? Because he don't really have a place. He homeless. He looking for you to be stupid so that he can make you his home. Look at Job, what he was doing, going to fro the earth. He homeless. He don't got nowhere to live. He don't, and I'm talking spiritually, he don't have a body. As far as anybody that's born again and in the blood of Jesus and in the spirit of God, he can't live inside of them. So, so he don't have a body to live inside of. Now, so he looking for a home. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Give no place to the devil. Don't let, because listen, sometimes the devil know that he can't buy you. So he want to spend the night. And what he, he, he want just a couple hours that he can plant wrong seed in you so that when you arise and wake up, that you struggling with fear and anxiety in all the works of the devil. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 34. And they said seven and few little fish. 
Jesus asked them, what do you have? So Jesus is letting them know that they have miracle working power in their presence already. Think about this, saints. They have miracle working power in their presence already. They don't have to. Let me tell you, hey, you retarded folk that unfriend and friend again. Let me tell you something. You crazy behind nigga Raj. Hey, let me tell you something. Those of you that that you you unfollow and then you follow again and then let me, don't send me no friend requests on Facebook. Don't do it. <laughs> don't send me no friend requests with your bipolar behind. You're crazy behind. Nigga, you know that I'm from God. Every minute you 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 hop over, you come right, you bipolar negro. I come to cuss you out. You know what the hell I'm talking about, what you're crazy behind. If you see that Jesus is with somebody and you know that Jesus assigned him to you, you keep jumping scotch every dog on minute, sending a friend request. Friend it. And you, you I'm talking about you niggas too on Instagram. Every dog on minute, you follow, you unfollow, you follow. Get your Matthew chapter 15, verse 34. The seven and the few little fish is packing miracle power. Something wrong with our race, man. We so disloyal. We so crazy. We so double-minded. Why we can't stick with what God tell us to stick with? That's why black people have been slaves. We haven't been slaves because of no white, no black. We've been slaves because of foolishness, because of being dummies. Our own rebellion has produced slavery. Saints, I watch these rappers. They got all this money. They keep going to jail. What you going to jail for? It's a slave mentality. You done got money. Live your life and move on. Don't hang around people that's jail bound. You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. It's a slave mentality. See, what you don't understand is that you cursing your children when you don't be consistent with God, you make it hard for your children. They got a battle with demons that you open up the door to because you won't stay by the brook chariot. I'm talking to somebody. Some of y'all ain't got no children, but you affecting your children when they come because they got a parent that won't listen to God. So that same demon come fight them when they're a little child and mess them up. I was praying with Zendaya in my hand today. Zendaya just looked at me. And then she smiled at me. And then I saw her, she, she was looking at me. I ain't let her know that. I saw her looking at me. She's just looking at me with fear. As she looking at me, I see the fear in her eyes. I said, baby, it's okay. Because she feel the same atmosphere that I feel while I'm praying. Now look at this. Zendaya put her head on me and fell right asleep. She fell into a deep sleep. And Jesus said, in my presence, it's never wrong to go to sleep. He said, my presence released so much peace that that's why in the Mount of Tra on the Mount of Transfiguration, if you remember, the Bible said when the glory hit, that Peter's eyes became heavy. And that's what the word say, sons. And that's what the word say, daughters. And that's what it say. His eyes became heavy. His eyes became heavy. Why did his eyes become heavy? Because he's underneath the presence of God and there's so much peace. Saints, I've spent time, saints, I, I have soaked. You know what soaking is? Like when you have on worship music. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Jesus, I give you glory. Saints, if I was to go to be with Jesus tomorrow, 
You got enough material to last your whole lifetime. I was inside my bathroom in my closet. Jesus spoke to me and said, son, even if I was to take you away, there's so much material that you release to the earth. In Facebook teachings, Periscope teachings, there's so much material that even if I was not here in the flesh, you could still carry the level of success and surrender that I carry and even, even greater. I don't know how you get more high than this. Shoot. Jesus have you saying all type of stuff. Talking all type of stuff. The world up there looking at you. Don't know Jesus don't talk like this. Jesus don't talk like this. No. I don't know how high how high how high you how high you can get. You, what you came to do, to do. I know what you did, did, did you? I used to soak like this. Used to soak like this. I used to soak like this. For like hours. For hours. With my eyes closed. Started seeing in the spirit more. Underneath the atmosphere until the glory of God hit my body. And I became numb. I remember one day I was inside of my bedroom. Inside, as, as a matter of fact, I was staying with somebody in where, where it was Decatur, Georgia. And while I was inside the room, I was laying down on the bed. While I was laying on, on the bed, my eyes was open. While I'm laying down, all of a sudden I see in the spirit, I walked into a marketplace. In the marketplace, they had a sweet potato, pears, apples, mangoes. watermelon and they were big I'm talking about they were big sweet potatoes like there was magnum sweet potatoes <laughs> I saw grapefruits <laughs> But the vision that I 
had happen while I was soaking. Let me tell you something. Some of you all have children. You may not have it in your power to like, you know, you work. Let me give you wisdom. Don't try to push what I'm saying the way I'm saying it. There's a wisdom to this. When you on your lunch break, you can have your earphones and soap and listen to my broadcast and meditate. You'll have moments where you could have this atmosphere. Not all the time, but there's moments. financial favor so it moves you to sow it moves you to honor God financially because you know that this is the area where he's about to bless you this is the area where he's about to do a new thing commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. So watch, he's telling them to take their position. I want you to see this in verse 35. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. So watch this. This ground is holy ground. The same ground where he told Moses, take your shoes off. So they're in a heavenly realm right now. They're in a heavenly realm. That's what's taking place. Right now, they're in a heavenly realm. So he tell them, sit down. Watch, they're in the spirit right now. They done stepped into the invisible account and don't even know it. But they just sold seven loaves and a few fish. They don't know that the sowing made Jesus say, sit down. Oh my God. Here's, here's what you need to see. When Jesus have a soul, the next stage is he tells us to sit down, meaning that he positions you for a wealth transference, financial favor of some kind. He positions, oh my God, Jesus. Watch, he command them to sit down after the seven loaves and a few little fish is being sown. Watch what verse 36 say. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes. And he gave thanks. Oh my God. Thankfulness breaks open the heavens. Thankfulness saturates your giving with multiplication anointing. Hear me, saints. The spirit of multiplication is upon your seed when you start giving thanks. Oh, my God. Saints, I'm telling you apostolic keys to unlock your wealthy place in this life and to live in the abundant life that Jesus died for you have. When you start thanking the Lord over your sowing, when you start praising God, I did this. I would praise God over the fact that I sold. I would stay in the spirit of thanksgiving and the spirit of cheerfulness because these are all divine characteristics that release financial miracles into your life on the earth. Thankfulness, cheerfulness, all divine characteristics. Why would the Bible tell us that Jesus loved a cheerful giver? Why? 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 Why didn't he say he loved givers? He said cheerful. So Jesus looking for somebody that got the divine attitude for sowing. Oh my God. 
Saints, do you know that your attitude decides how far you surrender? Because if your attitude is bad, you'll find yourself shutting down on the Holy Ghost. Watch, if I got a bad attitude and God tell me to open up the door for the golden girl walking past me, I ain't going to open up the door for the golden girl. The golden girl ain't did me nothing. Open up the door for the golden girl. But if your attitude is bad, you'll find yourself shutting down or even opening up the door for her because your attitude is stopping you from entering into sides of obedience that God wants you to move in. Sides of graciousness and kindness and fruits of the spirit. The same way, if you don't have a cheerful giving attitude, you can't sow your way out because if your attitude is bad, when God give you seed instructions, when the angel of the Lord is whispering to you seed amounts, you're going to shut down on the angel. You're going to shut down on the Holy Ghost because your attitude already is fighting you. He took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks and break them. And gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Here's the powerful thing about this. What we see is the cycle of giving going on here. A sowing cycle. Write that down. See, you can go through a broke cycle, a famine cycle, a lack cycle. But this is a sowing cycle. That's happening right now. Jesus, they saw it to Jesus. Jesus give thanks and break them. I want you to hear me. When God is having a soul, he's breaking us. You know why sowing is so beautiful to Jesus? Because he's breaking you. I've been there. I sat in my, my truck today while I'm driving I was thinking about it a couple days ago I was sleeping in a vehicle remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power you don't gotta get mad at nobody he got enough wealth for you. You just got to follow the Holy Ghost. You're not going to get wealthy from God by destroying people, by exposing people. That's not going to bring you into the wealthy place. That's just going to make you a work of Satan. Your heart got to be pure. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. See God what? Provide for them. See God what? Move money in that direction. See God what? Deliver them from all evil. Deliver them from lack. Provide for them at a higher level and scale. So when you sow in Jesus is breaking you. Because when you sow in, not only does your money multiply, but you, your character multiplies. Watch, your patience multiplies. Your generosity multiplies. Your submission multiplies. You multiply. Because you, you are the target. See, we looking at how can we get things. Jesus looking at is how I can get you. So what? He created a system for us to sow. And he said, yes, I'm going to unlock your things. But more so, I'm going to unlock you. And you're going to unlock me. And we're going to unlock each other. See, the power to get wealth. One of the most beautiful events that take place is that both you and Jesus unlock each other. My Dios, glory 